Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. In today's video, we are checking out the Supernode A5X because the AX platform, A5X and A6X have gotten a new update, update 291. So let's check out what does it introduce to the Supernode platform. All right, so now we have the update 291 and we have a couple of smaller improvement and one very, very big and important one. So let's start with the smaller ones and uh, then address the main uh, uh, event. So first of the things that's been added is that under the display input or in under English language, you now have the ability to change the date format, depending on what it is that you might want to do. Now, for whatever reason, this guy thinks that it's uh, 2017. But I guess that I haven't uh, hooked up online yet. So it didn't really refresh yet. Then under security and privacy, we finally have an option to actually choose a different server. And now we uh, previously we only had China and Japan. And now we also have United States and UK. Now, since I'm in Europe or Norway, the UK is the closest one to me. And now I can actually change and let's see the change notice if you have a five and a six devices in hand, and don't have same account, it is not recommended to change the server, please apply for a new different account again. Okay, so that's for the non x versions. If there are multiple a five x devices and the accounts are consistent with the current device, please ensure that the firmware version should be the same. Okay, also important if you're changing the thing. And the recycle bin data in server will not be migrated and recycle bin will be emptied after server is changed. Well, that's a good thing that they actually tell you all of these things. But it also is something to uh, definitely keep in mind if you are changing it on the older uh, uh, devices, the non x platforms. So this is something that will probably take some time. So let's do the change. And let's see, yeah, if I'm gonna wait for it for a long time or not, or yeah, how long does it actually take? And here we go, the server location has changed successfully. I started the timer roughly around one minute after uh, it started syncing. So within 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes ish, it took to actually change the location of the server. So I'm just going to confirm. And there we go. So now we are on Amazon United Kingdom server. Cool. Let's check if that does anything to the synchronization speed because that's something that was a little bit slower at times and it could take a long time, I assume, because it was the uh, 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 China server. So let's now just quite easily uh, add some changes here and see the update speed or the sync speed because I'm quite interested to see if there's an actual difference uh, between the servers that are being used. So let's just swipe down, press on sync and let's see if it's uh, any faster or slower. So far seems actually quite a bit more responsive. And I don't think I've ever oh, wow. Okay. So I've never had it uh, synchronized that fast, even if it was just a small change like this was like a tiny little update. So the first impression is that the server change does actually help the synchronization speed, something that I didn't like before on the Supernova platform. Now, this seems like it does address it. Now, I will obviously have to use it a lot more and then see how it uh, acts over an extended period of time. But the first impression seems to be definitely on on the positive side. The next thing that's been added in the update 291, I believe, is that the template background should now be possible to be hidden. Yes, so you can hide it. And now let's actually test does it export as hidden. So I'm just going to export it as a PDF or a PNG. Let's uh, 
let's do let's do both so let's export as a png and i'm gonna export again this time as a pdf all right let's check out the exported results let's go to export and that should be may png yes no uh template in the background and no template in the background of the uh, PDF either. So that's very, very cool. Another update from 2.9.1 uh, is that now you're supposed to be able to have a floating smart bar in Mailbox. But since I don't use a Mailbox and it's not even set up on my Supernote, that's not something that I can test. But I guess that it's working and I'm just mentioning it as a thing that it has been uh, added. Another thing is that in the feedback section where you can actually send out your uh, feedback or issues or bug reports or anything that you might have, we now have the ability to add up to four attachments and also system logs can be included for better troubleshooting of the device. And the main feature or the main update is that now it should be possible to export vector handwriting when you're exporting your PDFs. So um, previously you'll probably remember when I was testing out exporting quality and all that kind of stuff, Supernote didn't really uh, 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 qualify that high simply because the exported results of handwritten notes in PDFs, they were uh, not anti-aliased and they were not vectorized. So the end result was kind of uh, rough and uh, yeah, basically raw and not that good. So um, now we seem to have the ability to export as vector data and that's what I want to test. But I just want to say that these here drawings were from before the update of 291. So I'm not going to delete them. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to the next page and uh, here are my new notes from the update point two nine one, and I want to see how these things are getting exported. So let's export this as a PDF. And there we go. Now we have the ability to export as original or as vector data, which is very, very cool. Right. So now let's export. There we go. And let's move on to the computer. Right. So here I am in my super note on my computer. And uh, yeah, I want to go to the export and let's arrange. Let's view first by details and arrange by date. There we go. So what we're looking for uh, is the ION user manual that has been exported today. Yes, that would be today. So let's open it up. And boy, oh boy, would you look at that? Even the old ones are now exported in beautiful, 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 smooth vectors, finally. Now, this is really cool to see that your old documents are also supported. So that's something that I really, really like. And here are the updates that I used here. So of course, there's uh, some optimization here that's being done with the vector data. And ah, so now here we have some issues. So the vector data is exported but the uh, options and of course are you able to select them huh you're not able to select it now that's kind of weird so it is exported as uh, vector data but unlike on uh, other platforms you are not able to interact with them and furthermore while the vector data is there the settings, the vector data optimization settings are not that good because as you can clearly see, this is the original. It is a thin pen, but that is a normal pen that you would normally use. But you can see that the thickness uh, of the vector conversion is definitely deviating a lot from what you originally have. 
and the optimizations are such that um, yeah, you get some uh, uh, quite a bit of errors here and inaccuracies. So yeah, I mean the previous one, let's see how does that look like on the device. Yeah, the previous one is better. So thicker uh, pens definitely export in a better way. So this is much more consistent with what I have on the screen here. And uh, yeah, it's actually really, really good. So it looks like that when you go on to a uh, thinner pen, that's when we get to have some of the optimization issues. But if you are using a regular kind of a normal thickness type of pen, then it exports well. So it's a very, very welcome addition to have, but I do hope that they actually optimize this uh, vector optimization performance so that it can actually accommodate uh, thin strokes such as these, because yeah, when we write, we tend to write also with thick or thin ones and the vector optimization settings should be able to handle both situations. Either way, very welcome addition. It needs some tweaking and some optimization, but uh, hopefully that's something that's going to come soon. And then we're going to definitely have this as a really, really cool thing. Unfortunately, it does not look like we have the vector option for exporting uh, our notes. We still only have PNG and PDF. There is no vector option. And when I was exporting is PDF or PNG, uh, yeah, the only difference is when I'm exporting is PNG, I still have that old image size, which uh, really helps because larger sizes mean smoother kind of result. But uh, yeah, you don't have an option of exporting as a PDF. So it would be nice to have an overall complete and unified type of experience so that we can actually choose to export as vector or even better as an SVG file, because that would be the raw vector data itself. And then we can optimize it in our vector software um, because it's meant for people who need vectors and who want to use them um, yeah, to begin with. So it would be a good thing to have that option in the future. And hopefully we see that. Well, there you go. I think it's a definitely a move in the right direction. And even though I should be totally ecstatic about the vector stuff, and it is mostly it's really good, but it does need that tweaking. It really does need to be tweaked to support and optimize the uh, thin strokes in a better way, because current that's not really working properly. I mean, it exports, but as you've seen, it's just gonna optimize, overly optimizing the vectors, and it just doesn't translate well, well from uh, drawn data into vector data. Maybe it will be surprising to you, but the thing that actually makes me most excited and most happy about the update 291 on the Supernode platform is the ability to change the servers, because that's one area where Supernode always had problems with the synchronization speed and all that kind of stuff. And the initial tests that I've done, even with document transfers and stuff, it seems to be consistently much more reliable and much faster. Plus, we don't go overboard to China or anything. If you're in US, you can have a US server. If you're in Europe, you can have a UK server and that's more than good enough. So that's the feature that actually excites me most. Vector data is excellent. Uh, I would have been more excited if it was optimized properly, but at the moment it's not. But again, hopefully that's something that will they'll tweak and maybe we'll get um, a really good one uh, in the next update. One thing that I would also like to see is the ability to actually export uh, the notebooks as an SVG format, which is the native vector uh, data, because that would be a very, very welcome addition to the whole Supernote platform environment. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and be sure to check out the MDO, my daily organizer that I made. It's a yearly daily organizer tool for Supernode books or Remarkable and different platforms. You can just check out the video below in the description to see if that's a product that might actually interest you or not. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.